you and I have touched in, the time, in our time of life. Maybe the Word of God has caused conviction in someone's life and they give it to Christ because of your obedience or my obedience to the Holy Spirit who witness to them. Amen? You know, that song talks about a change in life. A change happened. Amen? And uh, we're going to talk about some of that today. Uh, we got many people proclaiming something that they, they don't realize how serious it is. We're going to talk about the temple of Christ. Amen? We're going to talk about the temple of Christ. You know, many times you look around and you see people that maybe went to church most of their life. Maybe they call themselves a Christian. But there was never com no commitment from them to the Lord. See, when you give your life to Christ, Christ wants to do a work in each and every one. He wants to do a work in your life, in my life, in everyone's life. And when Christ comes in, you see, uh, you can take the Word of God and, 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 and not judge a person, person, but you can take the Word of God and, and, and what it tells you and I that, that when a person becomes a Christian, what happens? You know, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I just got this verse from Marie, uh, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new cre creation. He's you. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you see, when a person gives his life to Christ, that old life died. Amen? You have become a new creature in the Lord. Uh, you are the temple of God. Christ comes and dwells within you. Amen? You know, uh, in the Old Testament, the priest went behind the veil for the torment of sin. Y'all know that. But that priest better be right with God because if he wasn't right with God and he, they call it the Holy of Holies where he's going. God and kill him dead. They had a rope tied to him, bailed around his rope, and then he hear no bells ringing. Uh, that man just dropped dead, you know, for the torment of sin. But Jesus made a new way, didn't he? When he was on the cross, the veil was torn half, and Jesus became your mediator in mind. Amen? Temple of God. How serious is that? Very serious. Amen? You proclaim to be a Christian? You're the temple of God. Amen. Are you allowing Christ to do a work in your life like he wants to do? Are you? You don't know what can answer that. The only one. You don't know what can answer that. You know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is dwelling within you. Amen? Uh, I'm going to 1 Corinthians, if you don't follow with me, chapter 3. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. I've got some marks here. First Corinthians, chapter uh, 3, verse 11. Through 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 through 17. Now listen to what the word says. Amen. He says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if anyone builds on, on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on is endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know? that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. 
For the temple of God is holy. And we're temple here. That's a powerful scripture, people. You know, the Bible says when you have an opportunity to share Christ and you don't do it, the blood's on your hand. Amen? Amen. But you know, it's not about you when you read these scriptures. It's not about me. It's about who's living in you. Amen? It's about Christ, our Lord and Savior. He came and dwelt within you. In the Old Testament, they went to the temple. They went there. You where they had to go for their torment of sin. Now we got Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He is with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen? So we can go to God anytime we want. Amen? Come on now. Amen. And if Christ is living in you, <clears throat> He wants to change your life. If you walk the aisle sometime in your life and said a few words and you think you're a Christian but your life has never changed, you ain't a Christian. Amen. The Bible says all things will pass away. Amen. Amen. It did say it might. The Bible talks about that they're falling away. I believe we're seeing that now. Amen. Because we got too many people in our world are tossed to and fro. They don't know what to believe in no more. And it's time for you and I to stand on God's word and allow His Holy Spirit to convict these people. Amen. Amen. Compromising has to go, people. If Jesus is dwelling within you, amen, he tells you and I that when we speak, when the Holy Spirit leads us, he'll give you the words to say, amen. So what we need to do as Christians, don't let the flesh be control of our bodies, amen. amen. Let the Holy Spirit lead us. Let the Holy Spirit teach us, you know, I talk so, so often and preach so many sermons. Sometimes I wonder if people realize what the Holy Spirit is all about. People, the Bible tells you and I, the moment you gave your life to Christ, and when you gave your life to Christ, right? You didn't keep it. You gave it to the Lord. Amen. That's right. You gave it, right? When you gave it to the Lord, who you belong to? Christ, Christ alone, amen? amen? What does Jesus want to be in your life? He wants to be what? Number one. He wants to be number one. He wants people all around you to see the love of God, amen? The Bible tells you and I, uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 6, go there, first Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. He says this, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you are both and a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Amen? Amen. You know, you can't say, you know, I gave my life to Christ and, and laid it down the road, take it away. Huh? You can't do that. Amen? Right. If you become a new creature in the Lord, you can realize there's things that maybe you used to do that you don't want to do no more. Amen? The things you, you uh, fill the flesh with, but now, the things that you do, you want to be around brothers and sisters of Christ. You want to come to church and hear from God. Amen? Amen. You don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from God and God alone. And I'm telling you, we at a time in this world today, we've got too many religious people that doesn't have a relationship with God because they've never been covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. People, you must understand this. I try to bring it up many times. Gary, give me a bottle of water. I try to bring this out many times, and I hope you understand, and God will bring it out again. In the Old Testament, 
the high priest better have no sin upon him when he went behind the veil, holy of holies, God through the Holy Spirit there for the atonement of sin. Amen. For the atonement of sin. And what happened? We as Christians, right? When we gave our life to Christ, you was covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells you, you're going to see today, that you are able to go to the Holy of Holy because God Almighty does not see your sin. Amen? He sees the blood of the Lamb upon you. Amen? And your Father in Heaven, which He tells you in the Scriptures, called no man Father but Him. Amen? There's only one Father, and he's in heaven. Amen? He knows all about you. He knows all about me. We can't hide from him. Amen? Huh? But he wants you and I to go to him and say, Lord, you mold me. You make me to what you want me to be. And if you're a child of God and you're not allowing God's will to be in your life, you are a miserable person. Man, you are miserable because that spirit would never leave you. Amen? Huh? And the Bible tells you tonight that when we get out of God's will, amen, He's your Heavenly Father. Come on now. He says, when you get out of my will, I will correct you, doesn't He? Come on now. I will correct you. And He said also, now listen, Claire, we've got people proclaiming to be Christians, amen, doing things that they shouldn't do. Guess what? What are they doing, God? He calls them a bad word, don't he? Huh? He calls them a bad word. B-A-S-T-A-R-D. You're not mine. You proclaim to be mine, but you're not mine. Because why? They are not able to go to the Holy of Holies because they were not covered by the blood of the Lamb. Y'all understand that now? Only when a person Go to Christ, a lost person, being convicted by the Holy Spirit. Amen? When that Holy Spirit convicts you and you give your life to Christ, you're able to go and talk to your Heavenly Father. Do y'all see how serious this is? Amen. This is serious, people. I, I, me and Deborah, we was coming up here. And I, I, we try to find it, find it, find it. And I know it's so true what I'm going to say to you. It's so true. Many religions right now, one religion, we write at 80%, believe if you're good and do good, you can go to heaven. You hear me? Huh? Do good. Being good don't get you to heaven. Amen? Amen. Huh? They got another religion. Uh, uh, believe there's another way you can get to heaven another way and, and, and there's a falling away in that religion and, and, and they don't understand what's going on and it's 50 something percent then there's another religion that preaches you know there's only one way you got to do this and do that and they're in a 50 percent and they're the falling away you want, to walk, you want to know why there's a falling away? I can't find nowhere in the Word of God that a preacher should be able to dictate to you and tell you what you ought to be doing. Amen? What I read in the Word of God, we must allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, to draw you to Jesus. Amen? Amen. We've got too many people to talk to and fro. People, I'm telling you, we are living at the end of time. I will give this information for y'all and I'll print it out. Because Jesus tells you and I, when the day is approaching, preachers will preach to itchy ears. No more preaching on sin. Amen. Amen. No more preaching on sin. Everything's all right. But I'm going to tell you something. They're going to be accountable. Amen. Either you allow this temple right here grow in the Lord, because you will grow in the Lord. 
You allow him to mold you. You allow him to make you. Amen. You become more like who? Christ. You know, the Bible tells you and I, as a Christian, you have the mind of Christ. Amen. Yeah. It's time for God's people to be committed. Amen. To be committed. Now, Y'all go to Ephesians chapter 2. Watch this. All, all tied together, every bit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, yeah. Oh, yeah, Lord, I'm the temple of God. I know it. But I, I'm not going to do nothing at the church. I ain't going to be committed to church. I just want to go to the church where I can sit down, hear the preacher preach, and go home. That's what people want, people. That's exactly what they want. They want to get on an emotional high instead of a spiritual high. Amen? Amen. Bible tells you in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, if you're proclaimed to be a child of the king, now, therefore, you're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the what? The chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building is being fitted together, grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Amen? God wants to put this body together, get this body in one accord, so that we allow His will to be done in our lives and for River Road Baptist Church and, and for everyone in Redfield. Amen? Amen. Either you realize that Jesus is coming soon or you don't. So I'm going to tell you something, people. If you're not right with God, you need to get right with God today. Amen? Amen. Because we're living in a, toward the end. I'm telling you, we're living toward the end. Uh, this Christian man... He's a Christian now, but he wasn't a Christian when he was working on this, all right? Uh, it's, it's about half the size of a rifle, half the size of a rifle, all right? They, went, they created something that they want to implant in you and I. It's made already, all right? I'll get you that information, all right? And, but he was worried about, this thing got a battery in it, they're little. Y'all listening, huh? And they worried about... How long will that battery last? And I'm telling you, God, truth, you listen to me now. But this little, this little thing they're gonna put on you, put in you, need to be around somewhere warm. Your body gotta be warm. And they tested it, and they tested it, and they checked around. And, and you know the two places where they you can plant this, where the battery won't go dead, huh? In the forehead. And in the hand. He become a Christian. He's saved now. And he's telling his story. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says when you see the signs approaching, you better look up. Amen. Huh? You know, ask yourself today, am I about my father's business? Or do you know my father? Uh, that's the question. Do you have a relationship with God? Do you? Are you happy today? Do you have joy? Are you willing to put all your trust and faith in Him and say, you know, Lord, I know you know all about me, you know my needs. And you tell me in the Scriptures, Lord, if I put you first in my life and walk in your will, you will take care of your children. Amen? Isn't that what he said? Exactly what he said. So you see, what's, what's happening today, and maybe with you, you don't have much faith. You don't have much faith. Faith comes by what? Here and hear the word of God. The more you know about Jesus Christ, here it is, in your hand. Jesus Christ, the word become flesh. Amen? Amen. The more you know about the Word of God, the more faith will grow in your life. Amen. And you see, when the faith starts growing and we start coming together, what are we coming together for? 
I don't want to pat on the back, and I hope none of y'all want to pat on the back. We come to glorify and praise our Lord and say, Amen. Amen. You see, many times you and I, this fear is low. Y'all been there? Come on, spirit low. But we need to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and let that Holy Spirit work in this church like it never worked before. Amen. And yeah. Mary, when she sang, Deborah played the piano, every uh, teacher, secretary, everybody, we coming to hear from God. Amen. We're coming to hear from Him. How clean is the temple? You know, Jesus went and uh, turned tables upside down and tax collectors was in the church when He said, my, hurt, my church shall be called a house of what? Of prayer. My church shall be called a what? A house of prayer. We've got big churches today. I don't call it a house of prayer. Huh? They got things for the children to go in, play around, play around while the adults are being preached to. How about the children? They don't want to be preached to and learn the Word of God. Amen. Because we live in a time now, at school, we're teaching our kids some bad things people are telling them. Right. So it's up to you and I to teach our children and tell them the truth. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Go to Hebrew 10. Hebrew 10. Yeah, go there, please. Hebrew 10. 11 through 18. We get through that. We get that far. If that's what God wants, we will. Now watch this. Let me see. I'm gonna start verse eight. Hebrews 10:8. He says, "Previously, previously saying, sacrifices often and burnt offerings and offerings for sin." You did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to you to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Amen? He takes away the first, that he may establish the second, which is a new covenant. Amen? By that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Have you you been sanctified? You know, as, as I live and as I live, I'm being sanctified, sanctified. I've been closer to my Lord and Savior than I've ever been. And I put more faith in Him. And I ask Him to forgive me when I did things that I know I should have done. Amen? Amen? This world will do everything they can to keep you away from God. That's Satan. That's His job. Amen? And we must put God first. He's a jealous God. He tells you and I, in every priest that stands, ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Amen? There's only one man in his Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. When he was on that cross, God took his eyes off of him. You study it. When he was on the cross, God took his eyes off of the Son because Jesus carried every sin upon his shoulder. Everyone. If we live tomorrow, those sins too. Till he comes again to, to get his children. Amen? Amen. Huh? So you see, there's no more condemnation for those who love the Lord. You're precious in God's eyes. If you're a child of God, you're so precious that He wants to mold you. But you must allow Him to. Amen. You're not yours. You gave that life to Christ. He wrote your name in the book of life. Amen. The Bible says we're a new creature in the Lord. He tells you and I. But this man, talking about Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time waiting till his enemies have made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he said, therefore, this is the covenant that I will make with you. After the old days, said the Lord, 
I will put my law into your heart and in your minds. I will write them. Then he asked, their sins and laws and deeds I will remember no more. Praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. Huh? So you see, we got a problem and it's called what? Conscience. You're conscious. And old Satan's trying to bring up things you done last year to which you don't ask God to forgive you because Satan tried to convict you saying you're not good enough to work in the church. You're not good enough to go pray for this person. That's Satan. Amen. Amen. You tell Satan where to go. Tell him where to go. You stand on God's word and his word alone and he'll do a work in your life. Amen. Amen. He tells you and I in Romans chapter 12. That's right. I like to get all this tied together where people can understand the word of God. Romans chapter 12. Now listen to what he says. Y'all get there. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the re renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. It's time. It's time that Christians stand for Jesus. Amen. It's time that we tell the devil where to go. And you remember, people, the devil will use people to come against you and me. That's what he's going to use. Amen. Amen. And we live in, the, in this world, and in this United States, that the ones, the sinners, sinners the ones on the left, it's all about sin. It's all about no standards. Amen? Amen. We got standards, people. Are you willing to stand for your Lord and Savior? Hey, if they came to this church today, what would you do? Would you keep your mouth shut? Or you just tell them the truth? And whatever happens up to that, it, it's on them. Amen? Amen. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Do people see Jesus in you? Do they see Jesus in me? Do they? Do they? Do I have enough of faith when I pray? And he tells me when I when I pray, go believe in that he'll answer. Do you? Do? That's what he tells us, people. When we go to him, go believe in. Amen. Go. And you hear from God. He speaks to your heart. You know that. You need to be obedient to that. You know, have you ever become a new preacher? Have you? Are you in the temple of God? Are you? Are you part of this body that God put together? Are you? You know, you say, well, Brother Sheldon, I, 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 I don't know about being part. Well, I'm going to tell you the secret. God put a church together and some of your hands, some to the eyes, some to the feet. Amen. Amen. If we go in the water, the Bible says we got to go together. Paul says let's run this race and run it together. Amen. Amen. That's what God wants, see? Does God have a work for you to do? If you do that work, He will bless you. He will bless you. So ask yourself, have I been sealed with the Holy Spirit? When I sin, does the Holy Spirit convict me? Do I really know that my name's written in the book of life? Mm -hmm. But you can know all those things the moment that you give your life 100% to Jesus. Amen? Amen? And when you give it, you can't take it away. You're His. He wants to claim you. Because Adam's sin has separated us from the relationship with God. And he's speaking to your heart today, Christians, and saying, it's time for you to be committed. Not to me, to him, to our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's time for you to allow him to do a work in your life. And it's time for you and I 
to never compromise God's word. It's time that we stand on God's word. And God tells you and I, he will give us the words to say when people come against us. Amen? Father, I just ask you right now, Lord, let your spirit fall on this building like you never fell before. Let each one of us see us like you see us, Father. You tell us we like filthy rights, but because giving our life to Jesus, Jesus cleansed us, made us all. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, we pray, Lord, that this, this, this people here maybe never been committed to you. Really never gave it all in every last day. I pray, Father, that they be obedient to you, for you don't want to knock on that Lord's door, not me. And Lord, whatever's happened, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.